ladies and gentlemen, please join me in giving a warm Cruise Street 60 welcome to the Chairman and Chief Executive Officer of Royal Caribbean Cruises Limited, Mr. Richard D. Fain. So where the boat is from, it takes away I love your big problems You can worry, you can drop them in wow. the blue ocean But you gotta get away to where the boat is from Pick me up Wow. Uh, this is, I, I have to tell you, at 8 o'clock in the morning, uh, this is a little bit um, scary. <laughs> and especially after Charlie gave such a gracious introduction. So um, I'll thank all of you for being here and thank um, uh, Clea and Cruise 360 for giving me a chance to be with you all this morning. Um, and I was wondering what I should be talking about and I chose two things that were important to me, so I'd like to cover two topics. Um, the first question, which I actually get quite a bit, um, both from you and from investors, and uh, I will say they have different reasons for asking, and that is, why is it that we at Royal Caribbean um, spend so much effort and so much time and so much money supporting the travel agent distribution system? And the second question, which I consider to be just as important, is how can we and why should we activate all of ourselves, and I know activate is the term for today, um, to help our industry and to protect our mutual future. So I'd like to talk about those two things, but I'd like to start with a story. Now the reason I'd like to start with a story is, again, for two reasons. Number one, I like telling stories. And I have the microphone, so I'm going to do it. And number two, um, I think it's relevant to what we're doing here today. And it's a story about one time when um, I took my daughter shopping. What could go wrong? Um, for those of you who haven't had the pleasure, let me tell you, once is more than enough. But I had to take my daughter shopping. All she wanted was a dress. And so we went to a dress shop. Again, one of the more, next to coming and talking in front of a 1,000 of you, it's one of the most scary things I've ever done. And um, she tried on a dress, and I said, oh, that looks terrific. Let's go. <laughs> and, and she said, oh, dad. And again, you all know what that means. So um, we spent a little time, and then fortunately, fortunately, uh, a sales lady came over and said, let me help. And she really did. And the dress that my daughter said, oh, dad, when I said it was lovely, when the saleswoman said it was lovely, oh, thank you, oh, that's good. <laughs> and. Whereas I would say to something, gee, I'm not sure I like that, or gee, that's really nice, the slaves lady said, oh, that's really good for this kind of an event. Or that's really good because it emphasizes your height, or whatever. Um, and I have no idea what she was saying, but it all sounded terribly um, knowledgeable, and it was reassuring to the two of us. And then, and so we bought the dresses that... <laughs> but I know some of you know that it didn't end there. It turns out that you don't just buy a dress. Personally, we increased the GDP of the United States <laughs> by 5%. We bought dresses, we bought shoes, we bought purses, we bought, I forget what we bought, but um, we did our best for the economy. And, um, and it was a great, and it ended up being a great experience. And although the truth is I had absolutely nothing to do with it because I was relegated to a corner after the first two minutes, <laughs> it, it was actually did bond us a little bit so let me come back, and some of you are wondering, what am I talking about, and why am I telling you a story about buying dresses? Um, most of you are not in the business of selling dresses, 
or purses or jewelry or shoes or scarves or whatever else we bought. But the important thing there was as knowledgeable as my daughter was about clothes and as knowledgeable about I am, as I am about clothes, we needed her expertise. We needed her guidance. And all of you in this room, all of the travel agents here and around the country are really very much like that salesperson who helped guide us. And she did something that was really invaluable, and you do it every day that's really invaluable. And that is you offer expert, one-on-one -on -one expertise. It's something that takes people from deliberating about something to actually making a decision. You are often the voice of reason, helping guide people through a ridiculous sea of choices. Most importantly, you're a trusted voice. People who buy cruises are making a really big decision. They make a big decision about the cost of the cruise, although usually they're not paying enough. <laughs> but we, we can all help that, can't we? But they're also making a decision about their time and their family's time. And if they make a bad choice, not only won't they have a good vacation, their family will make fun of them for the rest of the year. So they're worried about that choice. And they, they need your expert advice to not only help make the right choice, but also to provide the validation that um, only somebody who knows what they're talking about can provide. When I said that my daughter was beautiful in that dress, or made that dress look spectacular, my daughter, by the way, for those of you who haven't met her, my daughter would have looked good in a paper bag. <laughs> so it didn't matter what she was wearing, and all I could see was my daughter. But the, the salesperson understood there was more to it, and she was able to relate what my daughter's specific needs were to what they had on offer. So her advice was important, her expert advice, and her validation. So when I said, you look gorgeous, it didn't count. But when the travel, when the, sorry, <laughs> when the sales lady said, you look gorgeous, my daughter respected that and felt validated. So we do find that if the right person is speaking, the consumer pays, literally. Um, they need to hear it from the right person and you need to make sure that you are the right person. So coming back to the question I asked at the beginning, why do we at Royal Caribbean spend so much time and money to support the travel agent community? The answer is very simple, because it's good for business. You know that we are simply crass business people. I make no bones about that. I am a business person. My job is to do the best thing for Royal Caribbean and we support the travel agent distribution system because we believe it has a good payoff for us. We don't do it because we're nice people, although, by the way, we are. Um, but we do it because it pays and um, it's simply good business. But now I'd like to focus on another issue that affects everybody here. And that issue is how do we protect our future? We work, we all work for one of the greatest industries I, I can think of. And our future is very rosy. It really is spectacular. But, but there are things that could derail us. And that's where this conversation comes in. For example, let me just give you one example that was quite impactful to us a few years ago when some people in the media started talking about norovirus as a cruise ship disease. Well, you all know that the, the truth is the chances of catching norovirus on a cruise ship are infinitesimal compared to the chances of catching it on land. 
The CDC estimates, estimates that in a typical year, about 22 million Americans will come down with, with norovirus. And the chance of catching it on a cruise ship may be a couple of thousand in a year, if it's a bad year. So the truth is, you're much safer on a cruise ship than you are on land, but we need to get that message out. And we struggle to do that, and that's where the travel agents were so effective. So around the country, the travel agents reinforced the message, and they explained what it was to people, and gradually the issue began to disintegrate. It didn't go away entirely. You still get questions about that. But then and now, you have been the one we credit with uh, helping get the right message across. Taking just another example, um, we forget how powerful one misplaced word, one well-intentioned but accidental thing can do. And so i just give you an example, which I think many in the room will recall. Back in 2009, um, when we had the financial crash on Wall Street, everybody was piling in on Wall Street. And at the time, President Obama was very angry at Wall Street. And it criticized a few Wall Street people for having some big convention in Las Vegas when our economy was in trouble. Well, his intention was simply to criticize some people who ha had been uh, part of the problem. But the result of that was a dramatic decline in, um, in the travel industry, all aspects of the travel agency, even cruising. And it clearly wasn't intentioned. And CLIA did put together a group of people, travel agents, cruise line execs, and we went to Washington and we met with President Obama and we explained how much damage something like that could do. And it made a difference. But the problem was there in the first place. And you're seeing that today. Um, you have um, more recently President Trump's uh, travel ban. Probably he didn't think of the cruise industry when um, he made some of those comments and instituted some of those things. But the cruise industry and the entire travel business has suffered as a result of that. So it's really important to us and to the success of our industry in, on an ongoing basis to get the message across. The, just these are a couple of examples of how words can have such an impact, in particularly how it can have an unintended impact, sometimes with people, even if they do have our best interest in mind, or more likely, more likely aren't thinking about us. So we need to work together with a single voice to continue to advocate and to protect our industry. And that is actually one of the areas where your investment in CLIA can pay off. Because as everybody knows, CLIA helps us sell cruises. That's what we're doing here today. How do we sell more cruises? How do we market ourselves better? How do we get out better an understanding of what cruising is all about? Um, how do we work better on the selling side? But it also keeps our industry safe on the other side. So it, we thrive if we work together, and our industry today is thriving. One of the things that we don't do enough to communicate is not only the joy that we bring to so many people, but the economic benefit that we bring to the communities that we serve. Um, our industry um, provides jobs, employment, um, buys goods and services, makes a tremendous impact on, on the economy. So um, we actually overall generate as an industry almost one million jobs. Now, actually, I'm told the precise number is 956,000. 
956,000 jobs. That's a lot. Um, and if you all would finish your breakfast and skip the rest of these meetings and go and sell cruises, I'm convinced <laughs> that we could get up the other 44,000 jobs this afternoon. Uh, I have a feeling that I'm going to get in trouble with Michelle and Vicky who follow me here. So let's, don't tell them I said that, okay? But the other thing that's significant, so I don't know how many times I was in Washington and people said, yeah, but those are all foreign jobs and I don't care about foreign jobs. Well, by the way, I do care about foreign jobs. But um, because in the long run, we can't, do well if everybody else does badly. So um, it's simply not sustainable that we in the United States thrive and everybody else doesn't. But the beauty here is we are helping everywhere in the world. And so what's interesting, amongst those 956,000 jobs, um, and soon to be a million when you all go out and get the sales there, we did studies. CLIA hired, originally um, it was Price Waterhouse, and now it's an economic firm that does a survey, and it says, how many jobs do we create in the United States? And the answer in the most recent report was 373,000 jobs. So, th yeah, that is... That makes a real difference to people. And I think we don't do enough to get that message across. Of course we provide great cruises. Of course we provide wonderful experiences to people. Of course we provide great memories. And I think we should all be proud of that. But those jobs are also important because we need the economy to be strong and I'm really proud of the role that our industry plays to doing it. And it also helps motivate us. I hope it makes you all proud. And I hope it all makes you realize the importance of CLIA as a way of help get that message across. Now, one of the things we ought to remember is that CLIA represents the cruise lines. I'm a member of CLIA as a cruise line executive. And there are, in fact, 60 cruise line members. By the way, you don't need to remember that. There's only one cruise line you need to remember. <laughs> So, you know, I, you know, the other 59 we can just leave aside for today. Um, but what's perhaps more significant is that in addition to that one cruise line, uh, CLIA represents 25,000 travel agents. 25,000 travel agents. Understand the importance of that. Understand the political significance of 25,000 people who have a common interest, and all, all of you have a common interest in advancing the, the success of our industry and protecting our industry from uh, poorly thought through or unintentional consequences of, of things, particularly in Washington. So together we can actually do a lot um, to affect change. We can change regulation. We can change legislation that oftentimes has unintended consequences. I know the concept of Washington doing something unintentionally is, is, a, is, is, is that would never happen. Uh, um, but if it ever did, the 25,000 of us would make one hell of a difference there. Um, so CLIA's mission is to help its members succeed by advocating, we advocate, we do that unabashedly. We educate. Education is probably one of the most important things for anybody to do in almost any field. And we promote our common interest. So um, I think it's interesting to look at some of the figures that have, that have come out because we are on a roll as an industry. Together we are moving in amazing direction. Demand for cruising 
Think of this, demand for cruising in the last 10 years has grown by 62%. I mean, there aren't many industries that have that kind of a track record. Uh, and it looks set to continue to grow at that same pace. In fact, this year, we expect 25 million people will take a cruise. Uh, an amazing number, you all know that. Um, it's also important that the CLIA numbers show that eight of 10 agents in America, eight of 10 of our membership of the 25,000, eight of 10 of them expect sales to increase in 2017. So one of the things I'd like to ask you to do is sort of ask yourself um, whether you're one of the eight out of 10 or whether you're one of the two out of 10. If you're one of the two out of 10, um, please see me after the, um, after the breakfast. Um, so this is really good news for all of us. It's good news for you. I, I make no bones about it. It's really good news for us, and that's what, um, that's what we're here for. There was another report that came out recently that had, I thought, some fascinating results and, frankly, some unexpected one, and that's ASTA did a report that said that bookings through travel agents, this is all bookings. Again, um, uh, nobody's here from ASTA, so they don't tell them that I said, I'm really only interested in the cruise bookings, but um, all bookings, all travel bookings are up 14%, uh, which is, um, sorry, all bookings through travel agents today 14% are now through travel agents, which is the highest it's been in quite a while. But what was more significant than the total number of people who are using a travel agent was, frankly, something that I had not expected. When you look at millennials who are 18 to 34 year old, millennials are actually more likely to use a travel agent than their older, um, I don't know, what do you call us? <laughs> don't answer that. Never mind, it doesn't matter. Um, but in case anybody was confused, I am not a millennial. I'm, um, but it is fascinating that the group, that this year you said they use travel agents 30% of the time, almost twice the average, were millennials. So, it really does show that we're in the right direction and they're also the group, these millennials, um, that are the most likely to recommend to a friend that they use a travel agent. So the future is bright for all of us and, and I'm really happy about that. But it is also important that we not get complacent. Um, and I think that's why CLIA chose the theme of activate. Uh, it's probably a very good word. Um, I looked it up, it had a very interesting definition. I think we all know what activating means. It clearly means to intensify, to make more active, and that's what we as an industry need to do together. So um, I'm unabashedly here saying our success is looking good, our future is looking good, but our success depends on your success and our causes are common, and frankly, that's a good way, that's a good position to be in. Uh, together, we can recreate vacations of a lifetime. Um, we help plan, we help people plan, we help families plan, uh, and it gives them a vacation that people never forget. The other statistic I like to look at is people 10 years ago, if you ask what they were looking for, they were looking for things. They were looking for big screen TV sets. Um, they were looking for fancier cars. Today, they're looking for memories, and that's where we all come in. Many of you have heard me say, I have the best job in the world. And I simply say it because it's True, it's great. I, I work for an industry that makes people happy. I work for a company that's filled with passionate people that care about doing a great job and providing great vacations. Um, and we're very successful at it. 
But I'm not just here to talk about Royal Caribbean. Although, by the way, um, if you've got another hour or so, I'm quite happy to do that too. But I am here because I love the mission of CLIA. I love what CLIA does. Uh, and, but I'm not here just on behalf of CLIA. I'm here for a very simple reason. I am passionately enthusiastic about what we as an industry do. Um, and I'm proud to be part of this industry. And it is my passion, I will admit it. Um, I work every day um, to ensure that on a competitive basis, first of all, we crush the competition. Uh, um, but secondly, that we help our industry grow. And on, in, on issues relating to um, the health of our industry, the safety, security of our, of our guests, our crew, our planet, um, I'm proud that our industry works together. And on that basis, I'm willing to admit that there are, in fact, 60 cruise line members of CLIA. <laughs> you can forget it for any other basis. But on that basis, I'm quite happy to do it. So my message is very simple. Together, we can do wonderful things. Together, we can do what we've been doing and then some. Together, I believe we can do anything. And I would like to say that it is a pleasure and an honor to do that with you. Thank you all very much, and enjoy the conference.